Hello everybody, I'm Adrian, Philip, uh, Jay, uh, we're from Audio Excellence in Canada. We'd like to uh, share some more uh, uh, background, if you will, about uh, uh, ourselves and some things that we're interested in. Um, if you like, first of all, if you like our videos, please subscribe and turn on the notification. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the BBC LS35A. Is it all that it's cracked up to be? So a bit of background, um, the uh, BBC designed the LS35A originally as a monitor to be used in um, uh, monitoring vans outside of a venue. And they designed it to be transparent and uh, musical. Um, the original version was uh, designed so that the impedance, not so that, but rather the impedance turned out to be about 15 ohms. And then in 1975, uh, BBC licensed a few British companies to uh, manufacture them and sell them. And uh, they were using KEF supplied drivers. And in 1987, the design was revised because KEF had changed the drivers. So um, uh, the, the, the uh, result of that change was that the impedance dropped down to 11 ohms. You may be aware that uh, there are these two different um, impedance versions. Uh, some people estimate that over 100,000 pairs were sold. And by 1990s, uh, late 1990s, the parts had been discontinued and so LS35A essentially was uh, no longer. Uh, recently, in the last few years, uh, you've had a few companies now uh, um, producing the LS35As again. And again, these are officially licensed version. Falcon is one, I think Sterling is the other, and Audio Space is the third. Um, so I'm going to uh, start the discussion first with um, just describing my first impressions and, and how I came about to know the LS35As. Um, if you go back a few of our earlier videos, we talked about our first audiophile experience. Well, one of my first uh, audiophile experiences was, um, well, I, I mentioned that I had bought the Bose 901s and I was incredibly disappointed. And what I didn't talk about in the last video was that, like you, I'd gone to Ring Audio by accident. Um, uh, Ring Audio was one of the uh, uh, one of the high end audio stores back in the '80s in Toronto. I walked in, and <clears throat> this gentleman, I think his name was Mike, um, showed me these tiny little speakers with uh, um, a musical fidelity A1, which we'll talk about in the future, integrated amplifier, uh, using an original Rega 3 turntable, and the sound blew my mind. I was really impressed by what I heard, and that was what I, that was my first um, uh, um, experience with the LS three five A. Then, uh, about a year or so later, uh, I ended up buying a pair. I was living in a rented uh, apartment, going to university, and I had these um, little LS three five As um, in front of the nook that served as our kitchen and the sound space. The, the sound stage and the depth was uncanny. Now, a large part of that was because the speakers were so far away from the wall. But every one of my friends in university who would come over would, would hear these tiny little speakers and just get blown away by the sound. So um, that was my first impressions of the uh, LS35A. Uh, Bill, why don't you uh, give us your thoughts? Um, so the kind of things that I know about this speaker is that, uh, and one of the reasons why there's so many of them made by so many different manufacturers, uh, the BBC actually had a policy of not being held, tied down to one supplier. So every regional office uh, from remote monitoring, they wanted to have a supplier that was basically in that area. And so lots of different manufacturers ended up making the speakers just so that the BBC would always have the same speaker from almost anybody and it would sound exactly the same. So it was a consistency and that's unheard of in the audio file industry. So let's clarify, are you saying that the drivers were supplied by various different dr driver companies? I'm not saying that, but KEF would supply the drivers, okay. but the cabinet manufacturer and uh, perhaps some of the way the crossovers work, um, 
or the components in that, they weren't all like specifically specified, you must have this capacitor, but this is the range. So some of the, 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 the <coughs> crossovers were a little bit different. But in any case, what, ha what happened is that you're in Surrey and you're, you're in the BBC, you want to have the monitor. Instead of ordering it from London, you would order it from a local manufacturer, which might be Rogers, for instance. I don't know if that's the right one, but that's how it, it works. So that's why there are so many different <coughs> manufacturers. So of course, the one that I knew and the one I talked about in the last time was the Rogers LS35A. And um, I recently had, uh, well, there's a friend of mine who is bringing in the audio space uh, version of it, which is the first license, the newly licensed version. It has an official BBC license. Um, and I had a chance to demo it versus a very good old, like a uh, old stock uh, Chartwell LS35A. And um, the new version and the old version, for all intents and purposes, were acoustically, audibly the, exactly the same. Um, minor, minor differences, one being that, of course, the chart well is 40 years old, so the wood is a little bit different, and the new version, of course, doesn't have the same kind of drivers. These are drivers of the same design being manufactured by Audio Space, uh, but if you closed your eyes, you could not tell the difference. And so that actually, um, you know, that is a really good sign that they're able to, because of the BBC specifications, the new stuff, and I've heard the Falcon too, the Falcon was identical. So really, you know, uh, you can't go wrong. The speaker endures because voices are neutral and accurate and lifelike. Um, and I mean, you can do that right. You can forgive most of the other little things that the speaker might not do exceptionally well, but and in this case, the LS358 does most of it well. The only thing it doesn't do well in because of the small box is it doesn't play low. So, okay. um, that's, well, let's that's get Jay's uh, thoughts. Jay, what do you think of the LS358? Um, I think it's a very good uh, small speaker. Um, I think in most cases, if the mid-range doesn't sound right in a speaker, it just doesn't sound right to me personally. And um, the LS358 has that mid-range that just sounds right. Um, like Philip mentioned, it sounds lifelike. The instruments sound realistic. The voices, human voices sound very, very full and realistic. Um, now it is a sealed design, it's not ported in any way. Um, so uh, from my understanding, there's a bump in the 150 hertz area, uh, which compensates for that bass region. Uh, and that in large effect gives the impression of being a little bit more of a more warm speaker. And um, that's the feedback I've gotten from a lot of people that I've talked to who own the LS35 base. And so I think it's a very, very good monitor. And mind you, this um, LS35A was designed to be in a broadcasting van so that you can have it in a very confined space. Um, it really picked up in the audiophile world because it sounds good. And I believe like upwards of 100,000 pairs were sold. Now there's different numbers on the internet, but um, the number speaks for itself is all I can say. Um, like Philip said, it may not do the low, low bass, but it has the impression of having that full body sound. The voices sound right. Um, the high frequency extension is extremely, extremely coherent. Um, so what can you ask for a small speaker like that? Um, now, can you get better speakers in the day and age? Um, sure, I mean, there's so many stuff out there these, these days, but um, you know, there's one of the legends out there for sure. Okay, well, let's talk about the Sonics now. <clears throat> so my, um, my, my take on the sound, as Jay mentioned, is that the mid-range is really quite nice. I, I to this day, uh, still like the speakers very much. Um, uh, it's, it's not absolutely neutral in the sense, like, if you were to look at the frequency response compared to, say, some of other speakers where they um, really make an effort to make the frequency response as flat as possible, I don't think that that's what it does. Having said that, it's not, uh, you know, horrible by any means. Um, and, and whatever odd characteristic it has in the frequency domain, it's very musically appealing. Um, and also because of its size, um, it means that for people in tiny spaces, uh, areas of the world where apartments and, and homes are small, the speaker works really, really well. 
Um, one thing to note, uh, because of the impedance, 11 ohms and, and 15 ohms, um, a lot of people over the years have used tubes because tubes, for whatever reason, uh, seem to work better with higher impedance loads. Um, and synergistically, they seem to sound really nice also with, with tubes, at least for me. Um, my my When I had my uh, LS35As, they were Rogers. Um, I was using a counterpoint SA12. It was... Um, uh, um, my gosh, all those years ago. And then uh, subsequent to that, uh, try trying to remember because I've gone through so many different things over the years. Um, oh, uh, a, a pair of uh, old quads, the old quad uh, monoblocks. Uh, and um, yeah, they, they brought me years, uh, not years, but hours and hours and hours of joy. I really, really enjoyed those speakers. Um, Philip? Um, so one of my... Uh, great all-time experiences was uh, listening to LS35As with different levels of equipment. And I couldn't believe it because we tried something that was relatively inexpensive and it was good. It was really good. The voices were great, right? And then we would gradually increase the uh, uh, expense of the, uh, the, co the cost of the equipment. So every time we put something better and therefore more costly, more expensive, the speaker got better. It didn't seem to have a limit. And at one point back then, uh, the speaker was about, you know, 700 bucks. So I think that's what it sold for in the mid eighties. And we had a $5,000 amplifier tube amp on it. And it was glorious. It played so big. We had it, of course, situated in the middle of the room and it just totally disappeared. I never heard anything like it. It seemed to have really great extension all the way up to, I don't know, at least 15,000 hertz and up because my hearing's not you know, the most extended, but I would say at least 15,000 hertz. And it seemed to have lots of warmth and bottom end impact, maybe not the ultimate in slam, but in those days it wasn't about that. Um, so for me, uh, that speaker uh, be, 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 it was beyond what they expected. It was always designed for near field monitoring. And for a lot of people, that's how they use it. In fact, uh, I sold a pair to a client who uses it in a bookcase. A lot of people use it in bookcases. And it sounds still great there because that's how it was designed. But when you bring it on into the middle of the room, it, it, it is that experience that is beyond what you can imagine. I mean, uh, I can't put it too strongly because there's lots of speakers that'll do that, but nothing at this kind of price range and for this kind of longevity. And the fact that, that it's being resurrected exactly the same, that says something. Jay? Well, um, in terms of the gear that you pair it up with, a lot of people uh, prefer uh, tube amplifiers. And um, I think that's a very good reason for that, um, partially because there is you know, a gradual increase in around the five kilohertz region and according to John Atkins's um, stir files uh, measurements. And um, tubes have that characteristic of being warm and, and luscious. So my luck with the LS35A really has been um, with mostly tube amplifiers. Now with that being said, for whatever reason that I can't explain, because not everything in audio is measurements and explainable, um, we've um, heard it with a very powerful transistor amps and that seems to work well with it as well. So um, all in all, um, it is a small speaker. It is, it is, um, it seems not complex, but it is, it is a complex speaker. I mean, the edge diffraction has been taken care of um, with those little rings that I, I always wondered why, why is there like a square on, on the tweeter, right? Um, and I found out yesterday during research that um, it was for edge diffraction. So in many ways, um, it stands its time. Um, and it may not be the most convenient speaker because now you have to find this tube amplifier that has a 15 ohm, you know, do you go with 11 ohm, 15 ohm? And Philip, I'm sure, will help you with that because he's the expert in that regard. Um, but, you know, there's so many speakers, that's something that we didn't mention is that there's so many speakers out there that has been um, based off the LS35A. And that's, I'll, I'll say, I mean, JR Rogers, uh, sorry, JR Acoustics, um, KEF LS3, LS350, Sorry, LS350. LS50 has been um, based on the LS35A, the legend of it, uh, which has been very popular. So there's, that just speaks for itself. It's, you know, Harbeth, many speaker has been based off that speaker. Okay. 
So to sum up, uh, the question was, LS35A, is it all it's cracked up to be? Um, for me, yes. It, it, there's a reason why uh, it has its legend. Um, of course, to be clear, it may not be everything that everything sa is said about it. In other words, it's not a <clears throat> David and Goliath kind of situation. It's not going to kill a big speaker where bass is concerned, but I don't think anybody really says that. However, if you are looking for a good bookshelf speaker um, that's, ironically enough, still current after all these years, um, and something that has tradition and history, LS35A may just do it for you. Um, in the store, we carry the audio space, as uh, Philip mentioned. Uh, I believe the other uh, manufacturers, uh, Falcon and I think Sterling as well. Uh, I could be wrong, but check We've it had out. the Falcon in here. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, and uh, if you have any questions about that, just email us. Um, you can contact us. The information will be uh, at the bottom here. And um, let us know if you have any feedback, uh, comments, and so on. We appreciate it. Thanks very much.